In this lesson, you will learn to state and identify the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning, as well as how to use inductive reasoning to find patterns and lists of numbers. So let's begin by discussing the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is where the conclusion is based on accepted statements, such as definitions, postulates, previous theorems, corollaries, and given information. The conclusion in this case must be true if your hypothesis is true. And inductive reasoning is where the conclusion is based on several past observations, and the conclusion is probably true but not necessarily true. So with deductive reasoning, here we see that normal dogs are born with four legs. Nico is a normal dog, therefore Nico has four legs. This would be deductive reasoning because we are working with facts. We're working with natural laws where dogs are born with four legs. That is just nature. And Nico is a normal dog, so therefore Nico has four legs. That would be deductive because we're basing it off of information that we know is true. In this case, it's a law of nature. And in this example, here we have inductive reasoning. And here we have Max observed that the last several Tuesdays his grandma went to get her hair done. So he concludes that next Tuesday his grandma will get her hair done again. Notice that Max is observing and he's coming to a conclusion based off past observation. So the keyword here is observed which will signify that we have inductive reasoning. Now using inductive reasoning we are going to try to find patterns with a sequence of numbers. So in this example, we have 81, 85, 89, 93, 97, etc. And we're trying to find the next two numbers. Well, notice each time we're adding 4 to get to the next number. So the pattern is adding 4. So you add 4 again to 97 to get 101. And then add 4 to 101 to get 105. Here's another example. Take a moment and try to find the pattern yourself. Once you have thought for yourself, I'm going to walk you through and explain the pattern. So notice here, each time we're dividing by 3. 324 divided by 3 is 108. 108 divided by 3 is 36. And 36 divided by 3 is 12. If I keep that pattern going, 12 divided by 3 would give me 4. And then 4 divided by 3 would give me 4 over 3, or 4 thirds. So we can add to get to the next number. We can divide to get to the next number. We could also subtract or multiply. And here, we have another sequence where it may not be quite as obvious what the pattern is. So see if you can find the pattern. Here, the pattern, if you notice the addition, we're adding from 4 to 6, we're adding 2. To get from 6 to 9, we are adding 3. To get from 9 to 13, we're adding 4. 13 to 18, we're adding 5. 18 to 24, we're adding 6. Notice the pattern with the numbers we're adding. So this pattern is one layer deep. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that we're adding. So the next one we need to add 7. So 24 plus 7 is 31. And then we have to add 8 to 31 to get the next number of 39. Here's another pattern. Take a moment and see if you can find the pattern for yourself and state the terms for each blank. So this one, what we have is if we take 1 plus 1, we're going to get the 2. If we take 1 plus 2, we get 3. 2 plus 3 gives me 5. 3 plus 5 gives me 8. The 5 plus the 8 give me 13. 8 plus the 13 give me 21. So keeping that pattern going, I take 13 plus the 21, and I'm going to get 34. And then I take 21 plus the 34 to get to the next number, and we get 55 for that second one. So this is your pattern. And by the way, this sequence that we have here, this is a very famous sequence you find 
all around in nature and other places but this sequence is called the Fibonacci sequence and I'm not sure about the spelling if it's two N's or just one N uh, but yeah Fibonacci sequence anyway that concludes our lesson for today we will see you next time